What an amazing group of people we are here. It's, uh, I'm just thrilled to be giving this talk. Um, I have spent my life, my intellectual life, on the mind-body problem in philosophy and science, and it wasn't until I was fully an adult before I had my first awakening. And my first awakening was because I had the opportunity to drink ayahuasca in a marvelous ceremony with Dr. Luis Eduardo Luna and Dr. Dennis McKenna. And so after that experience, as a physician, I thought, finally, I found a powerful medicine after 20 years of practicing medicine. And I left Brazil and that retreat that changed my life forever with a devotion towards figuring out a way to help ayahuasca medicine get to all the people that need it in North America. So my question was to myself, is there a way to do this ethically? So I, I always think it's important to honor my teachers. Um, Dennis McKenna has been both a teacher and a good friend, Luis Eduardo Luna, and um, that wonderful painting called Electromagnetism by Pablo Amaringo. So the question is, how can we bring the beauty and power of ayahuasca into the research environment? How can we do sacred science while honoring and respecting the ancient wisdom and the ancient traditions? So my goal since drinking ayahuasca for the very first time was to figure out a way to manufacture um, ayahuasca, standardized, potent, clean, organically grown ayahuasca that could be used for, in the United States, legal ayahuasca research. And in the United States, there are two agencies that we must satisfy in order to bring a psychedelic drug that is a controlled substance in the United States into the clinical laboratory. So what this says is I had to uh, in, in my effort to make ayahuasca healing available to everyone was to, um, was to uh, figure out how to do a phase one clinical trial of safety and dose finding. So I'm here to tell you the 12 critical steps that um, I have identified with my teachers and my colleagues to do this, I think, very important task. The first step was to learn everything I possibly could from teachers, from the plants. Um, I mentioned Dennis, um, of course, Terence McKenna. I gobbled up all of his books right away. Kat Harrison was one of my most dear teachers who told me very early on that when I had to make an important decision about this work, in this work of doing clinical research on ayahuasca, is to always put the plants first. And that has been a dictum that I go to when I don't know what to do, which is often. And uh, Waira is an ayahuasquero that um, I encountered in a retreat with Dennis um, in Wilcatica in Peru, and once again, um, Eduardo Luna. And on the far left is Ali Maya, who is a, a ayahuasquera in, uh, in, in the States and travels all over the world, and she has taught me a lot. So my first thing to learning everything I could about ayahuasca was to collect samples from ceremonies that I attended and I would ask the leaders, would it be permissible for me to get a small 10 milliliter sample of the tea that we drank? And I was surprised that there was never anyone who said no. I said, please learn, learn, take this, learn. And so one of the first experiments I did was to collect, um, how many samples here? Um, I collected a number of samples, 15, from ceremonies that I had uh, attended from all over the world. And I found out a, a, re and a really interesting um, fact is that the DMT quantity in these teas that came from all over the world that were made by different traditions and by different people had very similar amounts of dimethyltryptamine in them, uh, 0.42 milligrams per mil was the mean of, um, of DMT in these samples uh, that were gotten from both Hawaiian teas and South American teas. 
And uh, there was more variation in the beta carbolines, but I, on this, um, I, I based a formula, well, what, like if we were gonna make a standardized ayahuasca, what should be the, how are we gonna standardize it? And so the standardization in botanical medicines usually is one or two molecules that characterize that plant medicine. And so, of course, I chose harming and DMT as the standard um, molecules by which to make a standardized ayahuasca that would hopefully be the same from batch to batch. Then um, comparing uh, data that uh, Callaway and um, Dennis and others collected uh, way back in 1996 compared to the 15 samples um, that I had collected, um, there, there were within, they were not log units apart. And so I was able to start thinking about, okay, what's our ayahuasca going to be like? Step two, grow the plants, learn the plants, learn where they, where they love to live. And so when I met Dennis, his um, marvelous brother, Terrence, had recently died, and Dennis was looking for someone to steward the, uh, the uh, forest um, in the, on the big island of Hawaii where um, Dennis and Kat Harrison and Terrence had brought these plants from Peru in the, in the late 1970s. And so I became the steward of these plants. And in the subsequent years, I've been growing them using FDA, good agricultural practices, and growing them and studying them and learning what they love and what they need. So these are vines that were planted by Kat and Dennis and Terrence in the late 1970s. Some of them are over 40 years old and they're thriving um, in this particular forest, which is an old growth forest on the Big Island. So um, the other thing about these plants is that they've been vouchered, thank you very much to Dennis, for vouchering these samples in numerous herbaria. And then I vouchered the samples again at the Missouri Botanical Garden. So these are vouchered plants. And then the next step here was to teach and learn from my graduate students. Um, I did my initial research at Bastyr University near Seattle, Washington. Uh, and here are my graduate students that have been working with me all these years to figure out how to make standardized excellent ayahuasca. So step three, make experimental batches of ayahuasca tea in a quantitative controlled laboratory with drug enforcement agency oversight. So I applied for a researcher's license to be able to handle a controlled substance, dimethyltryptamine. And so me and my students um, have been cooking ayahuasca and making experimental batches. Here's our botanical medicine laboratory. Here's our distilled water. This is what the ayahuasca looks like after it's gone through a process. And then we bottle this and autoclave them and seal them. And then this is showing the um, high pressure liquid chromatography measuring the two, uh, the two constituents on, put, on which we are standardizing. It's very important to understand that there are millions of molecules in ayahuasca tea. We know virtually nothing about any of them except maybe 0.001% of them. <clears throat> Oops. Step four, obtain Food and Drug Administration approval to conduct a phase one trial for a specific formulation of ayahuasca tea using specific vouchered B. copii and P. viridis cultivars. And what I'm showing you here is what an IND, investigational new drug application, looks like. And because of all the good work that has been done by many of the scientists here, um, I was able to see this part here is the research that's already been done on ayahuasca. And then these are my tabs building up the, uh, on this uh, extensive human data, mostly coming from Peru and Brazil, and some from Spain. And then step five was to obtain a contract, find a lab that knew how to make botanical medicines and could also be, um, meet FDA and DEA regulations, was near me, and it turned out that I found the perfect place, which is Heron Botanicals. Here, um, this is uh, Canada. This is the Pacific Northwest. Here's Seattle, where I live. And Heron Botanicals has become the manufacturing site for um, this study. And these are the kinds of vessels 
that um, will be purchased um, in order to make large batches. And step six was to make a clinic in which we could do the phase one trial using and following uh, MAPS MDMA trial guidelines. And here I want to point out Angela Ward, who is here, our cl uh, lead clinical nurse, Sunil Agarwal, and our psychiatric nurse practitioner. Ames Institute was funded, uh, founded eight months ago, and we are ready to do this trial. We have the uh, medical technology, we have the staff, we have the room, we have the equipment and the, the setting for safe and comfortable and emotionally supportive ayahuasca journeys. So the first six steps have been accomplished. It only took 20 years. <laughs> and now, <clears throat> thank you. But now we have the following steps. Obtain DEA manufacturing license so I can make these batches in Kingston, Washington. Conduct the research um, and development to go from small to large scale production. Contract with FDA and DEA approved outsourced labs for the, the toxicology studies that the FDA will require. Submit the preclinical uh, pre tox data to the FDA. Do the phase one trial publish the results, and then obtain FDA approval for phase two trials, because this will be the beginning of trials in PTSD and alcoholism and, and uh, depression and all the other indications, including perhaps Parkinson's disease. And then uh, formed this wonderful dream team of Victoria Hale, who is, um, who is um, this woman is a brilliant woman who has uh, developed nonprofit pharmaceutical companies in, and to, whose purpose it is to develop cheap medicines for people who need them. And then here's Dr. Agarwal, who will be the MD. And then this is Dr. Yarnell, who's the lead at the botanical medicine facility. And then here's the thing that really made a big difference is uh, a family friend and her husband donated $50,000 to this effort. And I see this as a really important leverage, energy leverage, to um, go to the next step. So we need to raise millions of dollars, and I am so happy to say that MAPS is, has been willing to be a fiscal sponsor for this project. So if you're interested in helping us do this in America, I think it would be history making in the United States of America, which has become one of the most oppressive regimes on the planet Earth. And so if you're interested in helping us do this, please uh, give a donation to MAPS, and thank you very, very much. Thank you.